So I'm not sure whether you can see it, but we actually got the boat here in the background. And it's quite a remarkable vehicle. It is. It's, uh, it's made of your uh, car plates, uh, old wind, uh, window frames. And in fact, anything. Traffic lights. Anything, anything uh, aluminium, aluminium that is recyclable. Uh, around about 70% of the boat is made from recycled uh, aluminium. Uh, the hull and, and deck is all aluminium, and also all the structures inside are aluminium. And they claim that the boat itself is 100% recyclable at the end of its life. So that's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I mean, there is an issue over fiberglass. Fiberglass boats do last an awful long time, and so they're not as badly bad for the environment as they as you might think. Uh, a couple of other interesting things is that it's actually electric. Electric. Yeah. The whole boat is electric. There's no gas no and gas there's involved, no diesel so you, involved yeah, at all. You have. Um, uh, the hub, a hub is a induction hub. The induction hub, yeah. Yep. And right. uh, the, the power is provided by solar, by uh, wind generation, and by hydro okay. generation. Uh, so it takes it from the props turning in the water, and that uh, recharges the batteries. Um, they can do various different models and uh, various different systems can go into the boat. Uh, so the sort of kind of like basic boat I understand has about six or seven hours or eight hours possibly of cruising time. But they can actually increase that depending on what you want. And also as a, a kind of unenvironmentally friendly aspect to it that you can actually add a generator, a 15 kVA generator to it to uh, produce enough power to power both engines and that will give you a sustainable uh, cruising period and cruising time. And the great thing is to it's uh, on the next at least the next two three years you can customize your boat as you want to. Absolutely they can do lots of different configurations inside and uh, also they can do a different configurations in the saloon they can make the, the galley bigger and things like that so I think there's a lot of things going for it and it's a rather interesting design. Um, yeah. I have to say I quite like it. Yeah. Um, it's uh, pretty bold in its design statement and very yeah. shortly we're going to get the opportunity to go inside. Inside and see it, yeah, and tomorrow we have the test set. Can you maintain it for a longer time? Yeah. Because you can have also possibly there's going to be stuff. The life cycle of the boat will be 10, 15, 20 years, and and then it will do a refit probably. Yeah. Most people. Yeah. Okay. Will. Yeah. Okay. Refit. And same with the cars. We had yeah. the cars, and the cars were 10, 10 to years, and you had this phones coming up, and this life cycle is one to two years. So it's very different. I'm not. I'm not so sure. I'm not sure. I mean, it's beautiful, and I'm sure it will be successful, but. Uh, it's, it's not your typical catamaran, you know, it isn't your lagoon, your FP or anything like that. And uh, people take time to change. They don't just uh, accept something new on the block, you know, in the yachting world. They do actually take quite a bit, so I think it's going to take quite a lot of getting used to. I have to say, I love these big windows really big windows and clean they don't have anything in the middle uh, beautiful beautiful design yeah so basically all the hey yards everything is coming through the mast yeah through the, the bridge deck up to here, through up the to here. Grinder. okay so everything is centralized yeah. so basically no need to go up and i guess this is where the engines normally go, isn't it? So you've got, you've got all that space. Yeah, so there we, you can uh, place an uh, inflatable yeah. Uh, tender. Yeah. Uh, and so the actual engines are under the beds, are they? Yeah. yeah. So here we are on board and uh, absolutely fantastic design of boat, I have to say I'm really quite impressed with it overall. The main windows are glass which is uh, I think a real quite a good safety aspect uh, when you and think how big they are. it's beautiful how the dimension they give not having anything you know like yeah. the small windows we yeah. are used to have on the boat. Yeah, uh, they're very huge as well, very big, very high 
and uh, it's a beautiful design actually. Um, the holes are quite narrow. I'd, I will find out tomorrow. I just think the performance is really quite staggering. I just think it absolutely goes, uh, you know, ultimate speeds, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, um, it's, 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 the finish is superb, isn't it? It really is. It's beautiful. For finish. me, it's still the safety, safety uh, yeah. fixtures because here at the front doesn't have any lines in those. Uh, it doesn't have any lines but at the back. Really. They say it's customized, so probably you can. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure you could do almost anything you want. This boat has actually got two <laughs> owners' uh, hulls, uh, so it's owner's version on both sides, because that's what the owner has asked for. And uh, they say that they are customizable as much as possible. For example, this one doesn't have a chart table, a navigation centre. Uh, you just use the uh, plotters at the helm, because the owner isn't going to use it for long journeys with lots and lots of overnight. So but the distance here on the hull, on the top, on the deck, is much bigger than the one we had in the, yes, on the lagoon. On the lagoon. Yeah. But then there's other things missing, like uh, it's quite difficult to get up on the deck. You've got to climb over the seats, haven't you? There's no sort of steps up yeah. uh, from the uh, main cockpit area. And likewise, have to get onto the deck, onto yeah, the uh, deck adjust, up here. Yes, for the, so to yeah. adjust the sails, sails or yeah. go and see any yeah. problems on put the, the sails. Sail, yeah. Put sail covers on and things like that. Um, actually, it'd be quite tricky. So, Igor, uh, a few years ago you came up with uh, the idea where I believe you were on holiday about uh, building a boat and that's what most people would stop at but you actually <laughs> took it one stage further and not only built one boat but you were actually designing a whole range of boats. That's right, yeah. yeah. It didn't start out like that but yeah, at some point, oh, quite early into it, we felt that there was an opportunity here. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, have been all my life. And we just felt, wait a minute, this is a, this may not only be us that might like this. And so uh, this dream came along to build uh, a boat which is environmentally friendly in its construction and it's recyclable at the end of its life. Right. Um, tell us the story about how this has come to what is now the very first boat. Yeah, so when we started designing this, then, then obviously it was about making a cat that also feels as a sailboat. You know, it's, it's fun to sail. Uh, and we wanted a different styling, so the design is different from other cats. But also felt, felt very strongly that um, you know sustainability must be at the core of this company, at the core of each boat, but so at the company. Um, so sailing is obviously very environmental friendly, but most sailboats are not. Uh, when they reach end of life, it's a big problem. Uh, so we we felt that we could make it much more sustainable if we took care of all the materials that we used. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what we did. So recycled aluminium, uh, FSC certified cork, um, no polyurethane insulation but glass wool. All these choices we made with sustainability as one of the leading factors. So you have probably one of the most sustainable boats on the market at the present time. I think, I think that we do. I mean, it's hard to compare all of them. I don't know the whole market, but yes, I think that uh, by making all the choices for all those materials, and, we're, and it's not possible to do everything in, uh, in a fully circular way just yet. But if you look at that for each choice that you make, uh, I think you make a. We made a big leap forward. And also, you went without having any fossil fuels on board, so there's absolutely no propane, no butane. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. And that you know, uh, I feel that for many of the sustainable choices that we made, like the, the you know the no petrol on board and. Uh, or the cork decking, many of those choices are not just more sustainable, they actually turn out to be also more comfortable. The electric engines that you experience today are so silent and so easy to maneuver, uh, and, and there's no fumes, there's no gases, there's no uh, toxicity on board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, depending on what your specification of boat is, right. it's going to affect the length of time that you can motor for. But, right. Um, on a standard uh, production standard base boat, what would that be? Yeah, so you're, you're absolutely right that this, the circumstances matter a great deal. So if you have a head wind and strong waves, uh, that obviously takes you less far than mm -hmm. you would with the wind from, from behind. Um, but for this boat, which is a basic battery pack for 21 kilowatt hours, you can easily uh, do between anywhere four or up four to eight hours mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, of motoring. Uh, you just saw on the display that sometimes it shows that you even have 16 hours, so it, it varies quite a bit, but four to eight hours is a good uh, basic starting point. You can also double the batteries on this. Uh, you have additional solar and better weather than we have today. Then, of course, that increases the range. So I was going to ask you, actually, how do you actually uh, recharge the battery bank? Right, yeah, so there are multiple sources. 
Solar is an obvious one, uh, but you can great with these ocean vault uh, propellers. You can regenerate power while you're sailing. So if you go just above six or seven knots, and and the batteries need to be depleted a little bit because otherwise it won't charge. Yeah. Then you start charging, and it goes quite quickly uh, above a kilowatt uh, of power. Yeah. So this is the R4, which is around about 44, 42 foot long. 42, yeah. uh, you've got um, an R5 under production, and the R6 is on the CAD being designed at the present time. That's right. Yeah. Um, what are the sizes of those two boats? So the, the, the R5 is 49 feet, uh, about a meter wide or so, uh, close to 8 meters wide, um, and the R6 is 56 foot, and it gets to uh, just under uh, well, uh, seven and a half, eight and a half meters uh, width. And I guess uh, with that extra size, you get more accommodation. But uh, do you get uh, do you get upper decks? Do you get uh, binaminis and things like this? So the R5 it comes in two versions, which is uh, the standard version, pretty much like the R4, but with a longer uh, spoiler roof on the back and uh, a covered cockpit. But it also comes as a liveaboard version, where the sliding doors are moved further aft, so you get a much bigger saloon area. It's almost 30 square meters of saloon area. Uh, and the R6 is uh, uh, similar in that. So you, you again have the open or liveboard version uh, and, and the amount of space is immense. But to answer your question, no, we don't do fly decks. Uh, we, we stick to the same two level situation. It's just even bigger. Yeah. And uh, can you give us an indication of the sort of uh, uh, base price for the boats? Yeah. So the R4 starts at 429. Uh, the R4 starts, uh, the R5 starts at 895, and the R6 starts at 1.6 million euros. That is without VAT and without options. So here we are going to Windward and it is absolutely incredible. This boat is uh, doing apparent wind of uh, 45 degrees, which is really unknown for a catamaran uh, without dagger balls and things like that. It just shows that it's a beautifully designed boat and uh, very tender. You can really feel it at the helm. It's so much more got that exhilaration that you would get from sailing a monohull. And uh, with the open aft, you're right there. And you can really feel the boat's just starting to heal very slightly. It's still stiff enough that you don't feel insecure or anything, and it's not like a monohull, but um, the boat is absolutely beautiful to say. A little bit blustery today, but beautiful even so. And if it's like now, we are roughly seven and a half knots we're going now, and if you don't have the uh, several crops, it's amazing how, how it doubles the, the, the regeneration. Yeah. Favorite position would be here. It's made for sailors, and uh, while it's not a performance cat, uh, we do feel everybody who's at the helm feels like this is a sailboat. This is a, a catamaran with all the luxuries and everything that you expect from a catamaran. Uh, but but also a good sailing boat, so the helms feel very tight. There's no play there. Uh, you can tack in very light winds, uh, very easily, almost like a dinghy. So a lot of those small design decisions, like a lower boom, uh, a better helm, 
Uh, all those things make it feel like an action film. And you've opted to have the two uh, the two wheels as opposed to what a lot of people do nowadays, and either have the mezzanine floor or the flywheel. Right. And what advantages do you think that gives you? Well, this is one of the design decisions that make it feel more, I think, uh, like a sailboat. Um, we feel that uh, being more raised at a, at a higher level, uh, first of all, all the movements of the boat are slightly less comfortable because you're higher up, so you're being swung around a little bit more. And also because you, then a lot of people want you to have a bimini on top, and then the boom gets raised higher and higher. Whereas here we have the boom so close to the coach roof that improves sailing performance. And and also I think being at the back at the helm, um, again, it's more like a, a sailing experience. That's that's one of the reasons why we also wanted the open transom. Uh, yeah, from monohull sailing, that's what you're kind of used to, and, and it makes it feel more like sailing. So, this is going to give you that exhilaration that you really have typically on a cabin. Right, right. I think, um, again, it's, just, it's not a performance cab, but when people are sailing, they get that, that smile on their face. Particularly when we get like a, you know, two degree heel angle, uh, because you do get that. It's, it's a thrill. It feels like you're at the helm. And the combination with uh, you know a luxury interior means that kids could be on the couch you know playing games or whatever somebody could be cooking something nice and somebody could be at the helm having a little splashes of water in, the, in their face you know excited about sailing Th this shouldn't be just a vessel that moves around by being by the wind it should be exciting to sail Thank you. 